Hello, welcome to this video. This video is aimed at year eight students doing the human body topic. It's also aimed at year 10 students, the GCSE students um, on the topic B2. So there's gonna be some added bits to this video that kind of bumps it up to that GCSE level where we're gonna talk about specific names of chemicals. Year eights, don't worry about that too much, just try and get the key principles. So we call this lesson gums to bums. It's basically the journey through the digestive system. And what I've got here is some uh, beans and sausages, baked beans and sausages. This is going to be part of our meal today. So I'm going to pour those in. This bowl in front of you here represents the mouth. Okay. And I'm also going to add to that a couple of rich tea biscuits. Okay. So someone's had a little meal of sausages and beans and then had a few biscuits afterwards. Now, this masher here represents the teeth and what the teeth do is something called mechanical digestion. Okay, try and listen to these key words. Mechanically digesting is that chomping down on the food, breaking it up into smaller pieces. Now, what this does is it increases the surface area of the food. So it helps it to go down through your esophagus, but it also gives it a larger surface area, which allows all of those enzymes and the other digestive chemicals that we're going to talk about, such as hydrochloric acid, to do their job. Now, this is all quite solid and thick at the moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some saliva. OK, so here's some saliva. Sorry about that. There goes the bell. And saliva has this um, enzyme in it called amylase, and that's in the group of carbohydrates. So it breaks down some of the carbohydrate, some of the starch into sugar. Now, we can test that. Um, there's some of my saliva going in. We can test that by taking some bread and chewing it in your mouth. Now you have to do this for quite a while and it becomes quite slushy and not very nice. But if you chew it for long enough, you should um, start to get that sweet taste of the sugar. So starch is a long chain molecule and it breaks down into the smaller sugar molecules, okay, glucose. So we're gonna keep mashing this up the mechanical digestion that I talked about of the teeth mashing the food, and then that saliva, which contains the amylase, this is a chemical, so this is part of the chemical digestion of the food. So I'm gonna keep giving that a good old mash. I'm trying not to uh, splash it everywhere. There we go. Okay. So teeth chomping away on that food. Maybe add a little bit more saliva. I think it's going to help me in the long run going through this whole journey of the food. Okay, so there is our food having been mechanically digested by the teeth and chemically by that amylase. So let's just summarise this first point that we've covered, okay? And this is what you're going to use in your notes, on your worksheets to uh, get the key points down. So we're in the mouth. And we talked about this mechanical digestion where the teeth increase the surface area. If the writing is in bold, that's the writing that we're going to put onto our sheet or into our books, okay? So the teeth increase the surface area by breaking that food into smaller pieces. We've also got the chemical digestion. We had that amylase, which is an enzyme. Enzymes help to break down large molecules. That amylase was made in the salivary gland, very important for the GCSE group there. Okay, so it's made in uh, one of the um, places that makes the different enzymes. So we've got salivary gland, we've got stomach, we've got pancreas and small intestine. So four places that make uh, enzymes. This particular one made in the salivary glands and it digests, which means breaks down the starch into glucose. So here's a representation of that enzyme, the amylase, and here's this long chain molecule, which is insoluble, means it doesn't dissolve the starch. And it's been broken down into these monomers, these smaller units, which can dissolve. OK, so this is a soluble um, particle, which is the glucose. OK, so I'll leave that there for a second. So key points, mechanical digestion, teeth increase surface area and chemical digestion. The amylase digests the starch into glucose. So that's our first part of the journey. I'm going to move that now. Second part of the journey is the esophagus. And 
I, hope, I was hoping to have a better model of this, but it does do the job, so I'll show you using this. This is a lump of food represented by a tennis ball in the esophagus. Now, the tights here represent the esophagus, which is that tube from the mouth to the stomach. And what happens is the muscles at the top of that esophagus contract and they push this food through the esophagus. Now the reason we eat fibre is because it bulks up this food. It allows that movement through the esophagus to happen more effectively. Okay. Now this movement is known as peristalsis. Okay. Again, that's one for the GCSE groups that it's called peristalsis. And it moves it through. And this happens also in the small intestine and the large intestine. So it moves that through to get to the stomach. So let's have a look at that on our summary sheet here. So you can see that movement of the muscles contracting here to push that food through. Here is an image um, through the esophagus and that process is called peristalsis where the muscles contract to push the food. And again, if you look at just the bold writing, muscles contract to push food. That's the key bit for your notes, okay? And I also said that fiber helps to move the food through the digestive system. It bulks it up so the muscles have got something to push against. Now, fibre is not digested. It's the only nutrient that doesn't go into the blood. It just bulks up the food and allows it to pass through that digestive system more effectively. Had a feeling we were going to have a second bell there. Uh, hopefully we won't be interrupted by the bell again. Okay, so key points. We've got the esophagus, moving that food through bulked up with the fiber and we call that process of moving it peristalsis, the muscles contracting to push the food. Okay, let's move on. We're now going to the stomach. Okay, so in the stomach, represented by this biohazard bag, okay, we are going to put all of that contents that's we're taking it from the mouth, but you know it's just gone through the esophagus, but I couldn't have put it through those tights. So I'm gonna pour all of that contents, that kind of started to get mashed up food into the stomach via the esophagus. So let's have a look. There it goes. Try not to make too much mess. stomach we have got some more chemicals there is a very acidic environment in the stomach and that is created by hydrochloric acid and this hydrochloric acid is ph2 what we have in our stomach is um, a mucus lining and it stops that hydrochloric acid from attacking the stomach lining. It's like a protection there. And sometimes people get stomach ulcers and this is where there is a gap in that mucus lining um, that um, then allows the acid to touch the, the stomach and it causes an ulcer. So why do we have this hydrochloric acid here? Well, there's two key reasons. One, it kills bacteria. And two, it creates the right conditions, and if we're in GCSE, we're going to call them the optimum conditions for enzymes to work. So optimum meaning the best, and we've got some um, enzymes here called acid-loving enzymes, okay? And the specific one that we must know about in key stage four is pepsin. So what this is going to do is it's going to, because pepsin is a protease enzyme, that means it breaks down protein, we're going to add some of this in here. So some protein gets broken down in the stomach, okay? And it's done by that protease enzyme, pepsin. And it likes those acidic conditions. Without those acidic conditions, that pepsin won't be able to break down the protein. So here is our stomach. Now, at the moment, we've 
represented by putting our enzymes and our acid in there, we've represented some chemical digestion. We've also got the fact that the stomach is a giant muscular bag. It churns the food. It mulches the food and helps to mix it in this way. That's a form of mechanical digestion because it's not involved in the chemicals. And we've got the chemical digestion because we've got the enzymes in there breaking down those large molecules. Okay. For GCSE, particularly triple, our proteins are becoming peptides. Okay, so pepsin takes our proteins and breaks them into smaller molecules called peptides. Next job, we need to take the food now from the stomach. Actually, I need to summarise the stomach first. Let me do that. So here are our summary sheets for the stomach. And in the stomach, we said that we've got our pH 2. Two jobs, kills bacteria and creates the right conditions, the optimum conditions for enzymes. Remember, just write down the bold writing. We've got the mucous stomach lining, which protects the wall of the stomach from the acid. And any gaps in that can cause stomach ulcers. We've also got the fact that there is the mechanical digestion, that churning of the food. And the chemical digestion is those enzymes digesting the large insoluble molecules and they become small soluble molecules. Okay, soluble meaning it can dissolve. Okay, let's get some notes down. Now it's really, really easy to get caught up in saying that it's the acid that breaks down food. Acid does not digest food. Okay, what digests food and the only thing that digests food is enzymes and we're going to visit all of the different enzymes okay so so far we've talked about the amylase that was in the saliva breaking down carbohydrates starch and we've also talked about a protease enzyme breaking down protein which was called pepsin and it was the pepsin that we had in this situation so i'll just give you a second there to uh, write down those key points and then we're going to move on to the small intestine. Okay. So I've now got the next bowl, which represents the small intestine. And I've got the contents of my stomach. And I'm going to cut there to allow everything to go into the small intestine okay so there it is in it all goes now small intestine we've got some more chemicals being introduced we have got i'm going to wipe my hands bile now bile is made in the liver and it's stored and concentrated so made um, a, a more concentrated solution in the gallbladder. So made in the liver, concentrated and stored in the gallbladder, which is a very small organ just underneath the liver. Now, what this does is two things. One, it's alkali. That means that it's going to neutralize all of that stomach acid coming from the stomach, or all the hydrochloric acid coming from the stomach, it's going to uh, make it a, a more slightly alkaline, more neutral solution. And what that's going to do is help other enzymes to work. So we'll add in some bile. That's going to allow these enzymes, which are the alkali loving enzymes, and we're going to call it trypsin. Again, this is another one that breaks down the protein. For those year 10s, it's taking the um, peptides and breaking them down into amino acids. So fundamentally, we've said that proteins are broken down into amino acids. They have this in-between stage. So they go from protein to peptides, and that's done using the pepsin. And then this trypsin takes the peptides and breaks them down into amino acids. And these like alkali conditions. So that bile has created a lovely alkaline conditions for the trypsin to be able to work efficiently. More about that in another lesson. The other important job of the bile is that it emulsifies fat. If you imagine taking 
um, a large lump of butter and chopping it up, it would stick back together very easily. If you take that large lump of butter and chop it up and then rolled all of the little bits of butter into sand, they wouldn't stick together as well. And that's basically the job of bile, okay? It creates this kind of larger surface area where the bits of fat have been broken down into, we go from globules of flat, fat into droplets of fat. Much larger surface area. It means that when we get to breaking down this fat with the lipase, that's the enzyme that breaks down fat, and that's happening here in the small intestines, there is a larger surface area so the lipase can get to the fat to then digest it. So to make this really clear, bile does not digest food. It increases the surface area by pulling the bits of fat apart from each other. It then allows lipase, which is an enzyme that breaks down fat, to attack it and digest that more effectively. Okay, Anything that can be digested now is done in the small intestine. There'll be no more digestion after this point. Okay, it's all going to happen in the small intestine. Anything that is large and insoluble that can be made soluble will be made soluble here. Okay, so let's summarise that and we'll come back to that lovely mixture shortly. So small intestine, we've got the bile, which is produced in the liver, concentrated in the gallbladder, uh, and that neutralises the stomach contents creates the right conditions for different enzymes to work. Also emulsifies fat, which increases the surface area, enabling lipase to do a better job. Let's cross that like that. Let's see if we can. Uh, so that enables lipase to do a better job at breaking down those fats later on. Anything that can be digested is now small, soluble and we haven't talked about this yet ready to be absorbed through the walls of the small intestine so there's villi we've talked about those in b1 before um, and they increase the surface area of the small intestine it's this kind of wiggly surface of the villi increases the surface area allows loads and loads of absorption of molecules anything that's small and soluble is going to go from the small intestine into the blood it's exactly where we want it it's the transport system of the body Okay, quick note, you haven't heard me talk about vitamins and minerals yet. They are already, when they go into our body, they are already small and soluble. So they do not need to be digested. They can be absorbed straight into the blood. Okay, I'm going to leave that there for a second. Just so you can get those notes down. Remember the bold information is the key. Okay, so we've got bile producing the liver, stored in the gallbladder. It creates the right conditions, alkali, for different enzymes to work. We said that it was trypsin. Emulsifies the fat, creates a larger surface area that was breaking down the fat, almost like cutting it with a knife, and allowing the lipase to attack it more easily and digest it. And then we said that anything that can be digested has now been digested and can be absorbed through those walls of the small intestine into the blood. And the villi help to do that. Vitamins and minerals, small and soluble, so do not need to be digested. Hopefully that's enough time for that. I'm sure your teacher can pause this or you can pause this if you need to catch up with any of the notes there. Now, just to highlight very quickly, I've, I've said this already, but I think just to, to, for completeness, Okay, so here is the digestive system. We said the bile is uh, made in the liver, this organ here. Here's the gallbladder, much smaller organ underneath. Um, and that was for the neutralizing of the acid and the emulsifying fats. I think you've got a, a section on your sheet for this, okay? And we've got those fat globules becoming fat droplets, much larger surface area here. Okay, now I said that there were four places where um, enzymes were made. We had the salivary glands up here. We had the small intestine. 
we had the stomach, and we've also got the pancreas. Now, food does not enter the pancreas, which is why you haven't heard me talk about it much. Okay, pancreas is on your sheet, I believe, and it's where enzymes are made, all enzymes are made in the pancreas and in the small intestine. Okay, but because food doesn't enter the pancreas, we don't talk about it as much, okay? But all enzymes made in the pancreas and small intestine, the stomach makes that those protease enzymes, and salivary glands makes the amylase, okay? So that was just for completeness there. And now I am representing the blood with this bucket, okay? And you can see here the small intestine of my sieve. This is representing the walls of the small intestine. Hard to represent those villi, but they're increasing the surface area. And what can happen now, which is modeled really well here, I think, is that small soluble molecules can get into the blood. So anything that has become small and soluble is now absorbed through the small intestine, through the wall, through the villi, into the blood. And you can see what's left is becoming a lot thicker, a lot denser, a lot more solid. Okay, this is going to become the faeces soon. And then we've got all that good stuff in the blood. Next place for this stuff to go is the large intestine. Okay, so I'm going to move over to this bowl which represents the large intestine. And I'll put all of that in there. Now, this must be a long video because that's the third bell, this video. <laughs> in the large intestine, the only thing that can really happen there is if there is any excess water, it will be absorbed into the blood. Okay, so I'm going to go back to, I've gone the other side so you can see it saying large intestine. I'm going to go back to the blood. And if there is any excess water there, it will be absorbed, get a little bit out there, into the blood through the wall of the large intestine. Okay. I'll just put that to one side for a second while I talk through the notes. Last page of notes. So here it is. Large intestine. Any remaining water is absorbed into the bloodstream and then waste is removed to the rectum. And here we have it. Probably could have done with a spoon, but I think I'll be okay. So this is representing the rectum, and I'm going to scoop into there. Hopefully you've done these notes. It's just water is absorbed into the bloodstream and waste is removed. And then I'm just going to scoop in all of this waste. There's quite a smell coming off this now been mashed around and added with all those different enzymes and bile and hydrochloric acid and there it is and my final bucket represents the toilet okay and here goes let's let some of this waste go into the toilet and that's going through out of the rectum through the anus, there it is. And there we go. That is the end of our Gums to Bums lesson. I hope you found that interesting, exciting, and that you've got all of your notes. Go back if you want to at home and watch it again if there's anything you missed, if I went too fast, but I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.